Okay. Oh, that's an attractive picture. <laughs> what? The picture that I saw on Facebook is my eyes are all squinty. It's like, wow, that's attractive. <laughs> Yeah, we're not supposed to ever look at that. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning, everybody, wherever you are in the world. Good morning, Dr. Dave. How are you doing today? Good morning. Doing great. Thank you for having me. Super happy no to be problem. here with you. Always a pleasure to have you here and discussing and chatting with nature's divas. So I'm just going to get started shuffling. And were you able to see the Northern Lights this past weekend no no unfortunately we didn't get to see him me neither because it was cloudy here so it's like seriously right. yeah couldn't have just parted for just a little bit so i could see them so right. oh well that's okay one of these days i will see them so um my shuffle already has just popped out three cards all together so the first one's going to be marjoram so let's see and this is the resources that we currently have right now. This is what Marjoram represents in the first space. So breathe deep, connect with me. Breathe in the essence of Mother Earth. Breathe out restlessness, tension, and fear. I am Marjoram. Are you feeling disconnected from yourself or others? Do you feel lonely or lost? I help with reconnection and grounding to all there is. You are never alone. We are all connected. You are made from stardust and in being so have a direct connection to source. Always. When you feel disconnected from self, it is because you are not listening to that small voice within you. That small voice is there to help you move forward grow, and to alert you to situations, experiences, or people that it's best to stay clear of. Mm. Well, so resources that we have right now, first of all, choice. We always have the right to choose. We have the freedom to choose, and we have a connection to source. All of us have it. Uh, the majority don't use it because we're the it's the busyness sets in and we don't take the time to sit and listen. And the more we practice that, the easier it is to connect with source. Because um, we've talked about this, I don't know how many times now, yeah. but it's just like a small child. If you're speaking to a small child and they're running around like a lunatic, well, they're not going to hear you. You need to sit and you need to connect with them so that they can hear you and then you can speak to them. So it's the same with source or the universe or God or whatever uh, words you like to uh, use to represent uh, the higher power. It's you need to sit, but it's not going to be a one and done and you're not going to sit there. Okay, well, I'm listening. <laughs> That's not going to work. <laughs> You need to sit and make it a practice or a ritual that you do this every single day. And if you do that and you're committed to doing that, then guess what? The universe is going to go, oh, they're listening now. We can say something because they're actually going to hear us. And hopefully they'll actually do something with the information we're giving them. So it's always good to, um, yeah, it's not a one and done. It's a connection. It's a communication is a relationship that everyone should use to you know just understand what's going on and it's a really good resource to have when you're struggling it's like you know what i surrender whatever's going on to you i'm gonna let it go doesn't mean you're giving up it means you just don't know what steps to take next so when you surrender you open up the channel to say hey i'm gonna let you drive the bus for a bit because i got no clue i can't see what's in front of me so you know i'm gonna give that over to you so it's really good to have that connection and the end of that is 
that small voice within us that tells us when things are good or when things are like, eh, no, we shouldn't do that. Don't turn that corner. Don't go into that dark house. Don't go down that dark alley because you just know how that's going to start. You know, the start of a haunted movie. It's like, you just never go down that, you know. But it's also there if you are in a room and you're connecting with people. And some people, it's like, oh, I feel that connection. And then others, it's like, oh, my goodness, I need to stay as far away from you as possible. But then there's your mind going, nah, don't listen to that. You're okay. We got this. We want this. We don't want to listen to that small voice. And you know, that's never a good idea either. (laughs) Right. Right. So that connection is there for a reason. It's there for our highest and best. It's there to help us uh, move through the journey of our life. And this is a resource that we have within us 24 seven. But it's that practice, that commitment of connecting with that and really starting to to listen instead of disregarding all the red flags, the red lights that are going, no, it's because, you know, it's going to turn up badly and then you're going to go, wow, you know, I wish I would have. Well, you know, instead of the woulda, shoulda, couldas. Just listen to it in the first place, and then you don't have that issue. <laughs> right. What exactly. have you got to say about it, Dr. Dave? <laughs> you know, I think that actually what you just talked about, what you just said, was that trusting more often than not, when there's a major event that's happening in our lives, almost always, folks, if they're not already in that space of listening and using that intuitive voice and vision and guidance almost always afterwards they'll say yeah i kind of had an idea it was going to go that way (laughs) okay then well all right then so it's it's one of those instead of working from you know that 2020 vision afterwards well how about we start trusting what's being presented in the beginning? Normally, if, if we're, if we're giving guidance or a gut feeling or a thought that way, and especially that feeling, most times it's not going to be something that is so obscure or even new or outlandish. You know, the intuitive hit usually is not that way. It's a very subtle, usually hint or nudge or a um, chatter that's happening. And it's usually in a in a warming uh, warning um, type of a feel and thought. So why would we not just honor that, even if it happened to be wrong? Wouldn't that still have been a better choice than just ignoring it? Because then we don't have to do the yeah, I kind of thought or I kind of had a feeling. Well, let's just honor it from the beginning, and until we can really start trusting our intuitive guidance and learning those skills to be able to sharpen them to better in tune with them first and let those lead the way all i want to say 100 percent of the time most times that's exactly what is usually best for us if we trust that part so if it's that feeling and and i guess that comes back to that's the most important part that i hope folks are taking away it's a feeling not a thought because when we distinguish between a feeling that's something that we're intuiting that's coming right in as opposed to that thought because when we get in our heads that's where all the messed up stuff potentially can get mixed in with everything else so there might be some good in there but most of the time there's a whole lot of other um ticker tape stuff that's running in between it you know so (laughs) just getting back to that so you know marjoram is is one of those wonderful things that can help us almost use as a filter even of let's just really figure out where that is and and help guide me into trusting the right choices the right decision for me in the moment i might not have all of the information but in this moment i feel this is where i should be or what i should do about whatever that is I rarely, 
I actually can't come up with an example of when that's not been the best case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to do the whole, you know, 100%, but I honestly can't come up with an example. So, and, you know, oddly, marjoram is one of those oils that we, it's a huge component in what we call the uh, morphine bomb <laughs> when we mm -hmm. mix oils. So there's the frankincense and marjoram, um, six drops of each. You can use a carrier oil if you want with it and copaiba and, um, but it's, it's a wonderful thing of bringing those balance or it brings a balance to getting rid of what's really actually not there. So if we're looking at pain control or, um, pain management, marjoram serves as that one component that is allowing us to, or allowing the body to know what's an actual real fear or real pain, as opposed to what we're perceiving to be a pain because a lot of pain management is what's actually a pain and what we're imagining or fabricating it. And so it feels like a real pain. Marjoram in that mix allows us to get through all of that and kind of wipe the slate clean to know, know this part is actually real pain for the body. Do you ever use marjoram in cooking? Um. Okay. <laughs> Does your daughter use marjoram in cooking? <laughs> she does. It was funny because uh, I have a friend that owns a bistro and she's uh, thinking of making a cookbook and stuff. And she's like, oh, I'm going to have, you know, this cookbook. And it sounded wonderful, you know. And she goes less than I think it was, what was it, 10 ingredients or something like that. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's a lot of ingredients. And she looks at me and she's like, Really? I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> mine is like meat, potatoes, vegetables. <laughs> now my daughter's like, well, you got to put some spices in there because I don't like to cook. So it gives, you know, it's like, I'd rather just have marjoram as a plant that sits in my window and I love my plants, but I'm not going to eat it. <laughs> like I take, yeah. like, I'll eat it if it's put in something that's made for me, but I'm not going to go out of my way and the only spices would be Himalayan salt and pepper that, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of pepper? Oh, uh, I think it's assorted. So it's like red and black pepper. Okay. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I was seeing if I'd stumped you. Like, what do you mean? There's different kinds of pepper. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, honestly, when it came to food, I didn't know that there was more peppers until I got into essential oils. And I'm like, what? There's different colors. There's different kinds. What? Yeah, <laughs> so, I was surprised with that too. I'm like, holy crap, that's not pepper. And then it's like, yes, it is. Huh? Who knew? <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, well, I think that kind of sums up our marjoram. Uh, I will breathe in marjoram when I'm using my essential oils on a daily basis. I do that. So it just doesn't end up in my food if I make it. Well, how would you describe the scent for marjoram? Uh, for me, it's like a, a fresh... It's just like um <clears throat> I have I am challenged with describing how things smell, but to me it's uh like a fresh a fresh smell, like just that earthy, just ah, it kind of clears out the lungs and just you know makes you feel good. Mm. Mm. I'm not a huge fan, but it's not one that I'm repulsed by um it reminds me every time when i uh open the bottle and go to use it is that it's uh it's not quite um fresh grass like being cut but it's similar um it always gives me the pause like well i wonder what was in that grass that they cut is what it <laughs> reminds me of every time i open the bottle <laughs> i'm like well that's weird huh <laughs> You just never know. <laughs> like lots of weeds in that because it's not just grass. What was that? <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, totally so scientific. moving on to our second one is bergamot. Mm -hmm. Love 
And we've had bergamot before. So, and bergamot is things that we need to release. That is the position that it is in. So let's see what the divas have to say. Ah, breathe in the freshness of my essence. I'm bergamot. I help in uplifting, clearing the air, and releasing those things you have locked away in order to move forward. There is a yearning deep within you. Let it out. See where it takes you. Invite me along on the journey you are creating. I provide strength to move forward and commitment to putting one foot in front of the other. Ooh. Mm. So it's all about letting go. So this is hand in hand with marjoram, which is, all right, what's a thought? What's a feeling? What are those things that we need to release that we can see what's actually in our reality? And Bergamot saying, hey, I'm going to help you just sweep that stuff away and get rid of it. Because in order for us to move forward, uh, we need to release our past beliefs, our past habits, perhaps, in order to move towards what we want to do. So it's important if we have created our new goals for this year and now we are in the second quarter of the year so if you haven't made any goals yet please do so because this is your life and you want to gain the most out of your life that you can and create that life that you want and the life that you dream of instead of being like um <laughs> I all you always used to say I'm going with the flow. And then I saw this card and it said, only dead fish go with the flow. And I'm like, yeah, that is a good point. So um, I flow with life. I don't necessarily go with the flow. The I have created my own flow, shall we say? Because <laughs> I'm not a dead fish. And, uh, you know, so it's about creating that consciously creating your life and then taking those action steps and then letting the universe bring these wonderful things to you, which then create that flow in your life instead of you being a dead fish and just floating along, letting the water take you wherever that goes. And then at the end of your life, you're like, wow. I could have done so much more however you did so now is the time to go you know i got a lot of life left in me so let's rock and roll this mm. awesome <laughs> yeah i hadn't heard that one before yeah. so. <laughs> kind of set me back going huh well that's an interesting mm. way to look at it hmm. yeah i think the context is important for <laughs> <laughs> how that is all set up really because yeah i'm all on board with go with the flow when it means with the energy of things as opposed to resistance but that whole first thing kind of throws a new perspective <laughs> <laughs> um, bergamot is uh i is probably one of my I, I do say this about everyone, I think, though. Um, I want to say that it's one of my favorites. <laughs> I love bergamot. Uh, and, and I use bergamot. Um, I used to use that in the office a ton. Um, it just, because it was that fresh, clean feeling of almost like a spring cleaning, but it just is that wonderful, uplifting, but not overpowering um, kind of feel is what it did. But it also, it just... It's not just a deep breath of relaxation. It's a deep breath of inspiration is really what mm. it always felt like. Um, and, and I know that in some of the readings that, that we've done with um, when we use the Itobi scanner to find out what oils folks are in uh, needing for balance. And when a bergamot comes up, a lot of times it's about the uh, hope um, of bringing in hope, remembering to allow hope you know, into the new version of whatever they're um, choosing to manifest or to become. And so that bergamot is that fresh, like, all right, we have new life, new breath into what it is that we're doing. And um, I think that's probably one of the things that I love 
so much about bergamot um, is it's just it to, we we have a blend that's called hope, but uh, to me that is the hope oil really uh, just because it does it just lightens everything and it it just allows you to see much clearer from a very different vantage point I believe and so it's a citrus um, that it has that uh, uplifting um, it is. It has the um, antidepressant property because it is a citrus also. And so it's all around really yummy. <laughs> it's just so good. <laughs> it's one, um, I use that actually uh, in the car quite a bit too, uh, just because it's that um, awake and uplifting, but fresh and clean kind of scent. I love it. Awesome. And it seems like it's more that clarity today and really focusing in, okay, well, these are your goals. Let's move towards them. Let's clear out all. It's like spring cleaning, actually. Yeah. Great time yeah. to do that, especially within yourself as well as your environment. So that's really cool. So the last one is cinnamon bark. And this is how this is all going to manifest. So let's see. Ooh. Looking for a bit of oomph. I'm cinnamon bark and I am spicy. I am solid, versatile, and can add that spark back into your life. Are you wondering what you are doing here? Are you looking for a sense of direction? I'm here to help. We are all multidimensional beings who have many gifts and talents to share with the world. When we live small, we negate these gifts bestowed on us and our soul begins to wither away. This is your wake up call to take stock of your life, what works, what doesn't, and make some changes. Mm -hmm. Bring my oil along for the ride. I can help you see those hidden gems within yourself that want to shine brightly and be shared with the world. Wow, doesn't that just wrap it up in a nice little package? Absolutely. That goal setting, figuring it out, and really, you know, what do you want to do with your life? And if you haven't taken much thought, think of when you've planned a vacation if, or even just a road trip. What you're going to do that day, how long you're going to be there, where you're going to, you know, visit and all that stuff. You plan more into a vacation or a road trip than you do in your entire life. Hmm. Not really a, you know, not really a balanced way to live. How about you take some time and go, hey, there's some things that I really like to do. Write them down. Don't let them just be floating around in your head because that is not a goal. You solidify it by writing it down, cement it into being, letting the universe know that, hey, I'm serious. I want to do this. I want to take charge of my life. I want to consciously create a life that I want to live. And then take the action steps and use these oils, get these oils, bring them into your life because each one of them has such wonderful healing properties and different components. And they're so gentle that using them in the background, <clears throat> you don't notice how much your life has changed until you look back in a month, three months, six months, a year, just like I did and saw how everything had shifted and it was a huge huge shift but it's so important for us to really decide what we want with our lives and then do it mm -hmm. right yeah absolutely uh cinnamon bark yum mm. i know i, I, I do like cinnamon i add that cinnamon i do okay <laughs> i'll let you know <laughs> Mm. I add cinnamon to my hot chocolate because I heard it was very oh. good for me and it's very tasty. And oh, I just have to plug yeah. my computer in so we don't lose each other here. I will be oh, right back be to continue you. talking. Absolutely. You know, cinnamon, I thought it was, it was, cinnamon is one of those that is first on, on first thing that I think about it for cinnamon is it, it's, it's a kick butt kind of. Uh, oil as in it it really is that rooted seeded kind of, of feel uh, that it brings it's giving fire um, in illuminating what it is that that we're wanting to accomplish and work on 
it has that to, to me it really does just bring that fire element of igniting everything and um, because it is when well, technically it's a, one of the hot oils that we almost always want to use a carrier oil if we're going to use it topically mm -hmm. anywhere um because oof you'll only make that mistake once um because <laughs> oof yeah that that's i had uh a friend that she we did this the scan the itovi scan and that came up um and so she put all of the oils into a roller ball or roller um glass container that has a roller thing on it and she put them on the bottom of her feet well she didn't put any Woo! uh carrier oil <laughs> yeah not fun for her her feet were on fire <laughs> so i'm like well um after we get past the pain part of this uh let's let's look at that metaphorically <laughs> <laughs> Like where are you stepping, and and where are you where what are you stepping on that is creating these these burns for you? Where do you where should you not be stepping in her life? And that's actually what it was. She was putting her wow. toes into water. So like not is she knew better, but she didn't think she had a choice. So it was one of those. Mm, okay, I'm like, well, now that you have third degree burns, but you know, great lesson. It doesn't really, but <laughs> it's not that odd. <laughs> But it's uh, that whole thing again, what we brings you back to Marjoram. You know better, like, you know better. <laughs> That's the bottom line. You know better. You can feel it in your gut. It's that gut feeling telling you, nah-uh. Right. But your head's going, oh, we got this. It's never a good thing. <laughs> I, um, you know, cinnamon, I, it, it's that, oh, so good. Um, with, there's a, a coziness, which is odd that I find a lot of folks, uh, relate to cinnamon when they smell cinnamon it, for a lot of folks that it's that cozy home type of feel. Um, but it's like a holiday scent almost, and they mm -hmm. forget that you should be using it all year round. Um, and that, because sure we want to warm up in, in winter. So it's a great time to be able to use that and, and help, um, get that fire within us a little bit more elevated and stoked up that fire in winter. Uh, but any time is we want to be able to make sure that we're using the appropriate fuel for where it is that we don't need to go and where we want to be traveling. Um, and so making sure that it is the appropriate amount of fire and moving forward that allows us to, to really make those quantum leaps in, in our path. Um, it's it's also one of those to burn away i remember it was in a reading before it was to burn away the any of the shame or misconceptions mm -hmm. we have about ourselves um and again that goes back to marjoram of is that really a truth is it really a truth the thing that you just said about yourself or that you're telling yourself so this allows us to dispel any of that untruths that we're actually making statements to ourselves internally um, so that we can get to that wonderful, actual, real truth of who we are. And I don't believe that we've ever had a time together that we've been here and not talked about the wonderful light that everybody is and, and wanting them to be able to remember that. Um, and so this is one of those that can incinerate those myisms, those things that are not actually real. It's things that we're making up about ourselves. And so bring in some uh bergamot with it yay yum yeah <laughs> you know so yep. it gives us that hope and that cl that oh now i'm wondering what that smells like together hmm. gonna have to try that in a minute mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> so, oh, i don't think i've done that one before <laughs> so yum. and this is what i do with these cards as well so if i'm creating a blend for somebody i will shuffle the cards and then pick three oils and then create a blend for that person with those oils and they smell awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's usually something that resonates with what they need right now. So it's mm -hmm. pretty cool how that mm -hmm. happens. So um, um, any closing thoughts, Dr. Dave on our reading today? Yes, actually. 
Um, the one thing, this is super important. I'm like, this is a, a, a critical thing that for really probably should remind folks every single episode that we do is all of the oils, none of them work in the bottle. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Get them out. Use them. It's the only way that they're working. So have fun with them. Be safe with them. But again i tell folks well they don't work in the bottle absolutely so, i used to have a, a client that uh i gave her well she purchased some chlorophyll and chlorophyll is really good for all sorts of things in your body and i'm like how are you you know how are you liking it and she's like well you know it's uh in the cupboard yeah. and i'm like it's not a, a cupboard decoration <laughs> it needs to be used and taken she's like i know you know but it's the same thing yeah you need it's great to have them but utilizing them is so important so thank you for that dr dave and we'll definitely remind people about that and if you want to get your own deck of uh, nature's divas oracle cards Check out naturesdivas.com and you can purchase them on there. And divas is spelled D-E-V-A-S. So, um, all right. Well, we will close off today. Thank you so much for being here today, Dr. Dave, and sharing your wisdom. It's always great to get together. And we're going to be right back with what if and lots of possibilities for this Monday morning. So. Have a wonderful day, care, everybody. everybody, and we'll talk to you soon.